Hello, it's your boy, Karganor, and today we're going to be on our list of reasons why that Mars colonization doesn't... <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck to say with this. <laughs> I've read this several times already, and it still is absolutely fucking hilarious. Magic mushrooms grow in man's blood after injection with shroom tea. Gee! I, I wonder why, you know, a man brewed a tea from magic mushrooms and injected the concoction into his veins. Several days later, he ended up at the emergency department with fungus growing in his blood. The man spent 22 days in the hospital, with eight of those days in the intensive care unit, where he received treatment for multi-system organ failure gee i, I wonder why <laughs> <laughs> now released he is still being treated with a long-term regimen of antibiotic and antifungal drugs according to a description of the case published january the 11th journal of Ac academia of the Consolation Lion Psychiatry. I can't, don't know what the hell that is. The case didn't reveal whether injecting shroom tea can cause persistent psychoactive effects, as sometimes seen where people ingest the fungus orally. Well, you know, it's, it's the way your stomach breaks it down. You know, that's from what I at least know. I don't do shrooms. Though some of you probably think otherwise, you know, I don't do shrooms. The doctors wrote in the report, for example, in a rare cases, people can develop a condition called hallucinogen induced pers a condition called hallucinogen induced persisting perception disorder, HPPD, where they experience vivid flashbacks of their trip long after the fact, according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse. The case underscores the need for ongoing public education regarding the dangers attendant to the use of this and other drugs, in ways other than they are prescribed, the doctor wrote. By injecting shrooms into his blood... I, I'm, I'm just like thinking, my, like, yeah, that totally, uh... You know, that, that totally doesn't, you know, sound like some shit that, <laughs> you know, just like, hey, let's inject fucking tea into my bloodstream. Not, not even just anything, just fucking tea. Like, God, th th this is like some essential oil level bullshit. Oh, yes, Karen, you, you need to shove the essential and you need to freeze the essential oils and then you know, do a handstand and then shove the frozen essential oil ice cubes up your vagina and you'll, you'll be good. You'll be golden. <laughs> by injecting shrooms into his bloodstream, the old, old hope to... The, the By injecting shrooms into his bloodstream, the 30-year-old patient had hoped to relieve symptoms of bipolar depression and opioid dependence. According to the report, his family members know that he had recently stopped adhering to his prescribed bipolar medication and was cycling between depressive and maniac states. Uh, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's, just fuck. <laughs> man, the man found online reports that prescribe the potential therapeutic effects in, of hallucinogens such as LSD and psychobilum mushrooms, well, prompted him to boil the shrooms into a tea, 
He filtered the tea by drying it through a cotton swab before injecting it into his blood. The following days, he became lethargic and nauseated, and his skin began to yellow. He soon developed diarrhea and began vomiting blood. His family found him and took him to the emergency room, noting concern that he was seemed to very confused. The doctor, the doc, the doctors noted that he could not participate in meaning in a meaningful interview, meaningful interview. Due to his altered mental state, multiple organs, including the liver and kidneys, began to fail, and the man was transferred to the ICU. His blood tested positive for a bacterial infection with the microbe Brevibaculus, Brevibaculus, and a fungal infection from Cy- Cyclocybe cubinensis, cubinus, cumicis, meaning that the magic mushrooms he gr- injected was now growing in his blood. <laughs> Did they just like in? In, like cut this guy open like you're trying to save his like organs just fucking and like a, a beetle's album just flowed out of like the, the incision wound just like you know it, it's just fucking rainbows and like the technicolor you know stuff like it, it just that's what I imagine in addition to antibiotic and and antifungal drugs, the man needed to be placed on a ventilator after he experienced acute respiratory failure, where fluids build up in the air sacs of the lung. Thankfully, the patient survived this ordeal and was later discharged from the hospital. Researchers suggest that the psychocybin may be a promising treatment for depression and an anxiety. Oh, okay. And substance abuse. The offer no, but only if taken safely. In most research studies, scientists administer a drug in pill form. But in a few substances, you know, doctors have delivered psilocybin via an intravenous via an intravenous injection, according to a 2018 report published in the journal New Neuropharmacology. But these injections are given in tightly controlled doses and under medical supervision. They do not contain any fungi. The compound psychopathic alone is not alive and cannot grow inside the body. <laughs> yeah. When used regularly, in magic mushrooms are typically made into tea. Eaten raw or dry, ground to powder and put in capsules are coated in chocolate. Sounds fucking delicious. They are not directly, directly into the bloodstreams. Shroom indu- shrooms induce mind-altering trips by interacting with certain receptors in the brain. Specifically, the psilocybin psy- breaks down into psy- psilocin, a substance that acts, like, that acts like the brain chemical serotonin, which plays roles in people's mood and perception. Perception, fuck me, I can't speak English, even though I've lived on this planet for 21 years. But a bad trip can trigger anxiety, fear, confusion, as well as elevated blood pressure, vomiting, headaches, stomach cramps. Live science previously reported mad. Oh, sorry. The su- 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 live science previously reported magic mushrooms carry an added risk because they resemble some species of poisonous mushrooms. So people sometimes consume the wrong kind by mistake. And this is you want know, to just decriminalize, and in November, you know, fuck you ads, begone ye. Yeah, yeah, th- th- this totally doesn't sound like something. The, you know, this totally doesn't sound like. <laughs> I, I, I'm just imagining like the amount of. Sorry, that's my chair. You know, I, I I just, just, like, what the fuck type of thought process? Like, yes, I will inject mushroom into blood. Nothing wrong will go. <laughs> Sorry, chat. I, I, I just found. Oh my god! Yes. 
It just, we went from, uh, just, I'm sorry, I'm just reading all these live science things and they're just fucking hilarious. A man who died of constipation a thousand years ago ate grasshoppers for months. His mumma, his mummified megacolon. Is that even a thing? It's like a megafauna megacolon. I'm just like, I, I hold on. I need to. <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself, and my like child brain is immediately thinking, megacolon, mega toilet. Oh, it's a uh, okay. It's a. For a second, I thought this was like, oh, a megafauna, megacolon. I'm like, oh, never mind. It's a condition. <laughs> Yeah, a man, like, his mummified megacolon showed up just how backed up he was. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. The man lived in lower Pe Pecos Canyon land of Texas. Pictured here sometime between uh, 1,400 and 1,000 years ago. The arid area where he was buried caused his body to become naturally mummified. A man who lived in lower Pecos Canyon la lands of te Texas... So sometimes, but sometime between, okay, uh, you know, according to the study, died of a horrible case of constipation, according to the study of his mummified remains. During the pain, pain, up, during the painful mums just prior to his death, he made, ate mainly grasshoppers, the study researchers found. Apparently, Chagas disease, which is caused by a parasite called Trypanosoma cru cruzi, had blocked the man's gastrointestinal system. That blockage caused his colon to swell six times its normal size, a condition called megacolon. The man was unable to digest food properly and gradually became malnourished, scientists found. The condition was had have made it difficult for the man to walk or even eat on his own. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the researchers think that in the last two to three months, either family members of his community helped the man eat by feeding him grasshoppers whose leg had been removed. So they're giving him mostly fluid-rich but. So mostly his fluid-rich body, the squishable part of the grasshopper, Carl Reinhardt, professor in School of Natural Resources at the University of Nebraska Lincoln, said to in the test in a test in a statement. Sorry, my brain is having a general has having a brain aneurysms or some shit. Ran but the the directory in my brain for word is not working. Okay, and in, in addition to being high in protein, it was pretty high in moisture. So it, been, so it would have been easier for him to eat in the early stages of, a, of his megacolon experience. Megacolon experience! Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! Megacolon experience! A man named Guy Skiles... <laughs> Oh, God, I'm sorry if you're reading this, Guy Skiles. A man named Guy Skiles found the remains, which have been naturally preserved and mummified by the arid condition. In 1937, in, this rock shelter, in a rock shelter near the junction of Rio Grande and Pecos River in South Texas, it was kept in a small private museum until 1968, when it was loaned to the Institute of Texan Culture. His scientific work has done on the mummy in, in the 1970s and 1980s and 1980s and in 1986 a scientist a team of scientists described the mummy in an article published in the journals planes Arch anthropologists most recently studies with more advanced technologies have opened a dark window into the man's last months on earth for instance in 2003 reinhardt's team reported in the journal memorias do, do Instituto Oswaldo Cruz that they had found 2.6 pounds 100 100 
a thousand hundred and seventy grams of feces inside the mummy, along with a vast amount of food that remains that his body never processed. These findings, along with the size of his colon, led the researchers to conclude that he was severely constipated and suffered from malnourishment as his body couldn't properly pro couldn't properly process food. In a new study, Reinhardt and his colleagues reanalyzed re the mummy's remains using scano scan Scano, fuck me, I am... My brain does not understand English. You... In a new study, Reinhardt and his colleagues reanalyzed the mummy's remains using a scanning electron microscope. The new scan revealed that his diet consistently, consisted largely of grasshoppers in his final months. The researchers also, f the researchers also found evidence in the man's colon of plant remains called... Phytoph phytoliths that showed just how backed up the man have, the man would have been. Teensy structures in a plant tissue find, find phytoliths generally survive unscathed. The adventurous track through a person's digestive tract. That wasn't a case for this man. Phytoliths were, sp were split open, crushed, and that means there was incredible pressure that would been exerted on a microscopic level in the guy's intestinal s system. Oh, well, he was about to shit diamonds. <laughs> and which highlights even more pef the pathology that, ex that was exhibited here. It says, I think this isn't a unique any annals of pathology. The level of intestinal blockage and the pressure that is associated with it. The grasshopper diet discovery was published in a chapter of a forthcoming book, The Handbook of Mummy Studies, Springer 2021. The chapter will also put will also study well, well, well also bleh, also published studies of two other mummies who received special care at the end of the at the end of their lives. This get this includes a five to six year old child who died between five hundred to a thousand years ago in Arizona, who was fed fruit from a saguaro cactus in the final weeks of life. Oh. Okay, that that was. Okay, that 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 was an imprint. That was an interesting, you know, th th that was an interesting, you know, fucking discovery. Today, class, we're learning about, oh my god, it keeps happening. Did Nutcracker Man give us genital herpes? Oh my god, this just keeps getting int more and more interesting. <laughs> Uh, today class we're here uh studying we we, we started on uh we studied uh we're, today we're studying uh re dumb ways to, to to just existence what not to do when you uh go and fucking do this uh i am your teacher uh dr carganor uh if you keep uh if you keep texting on snapchat while you're in class i'm going to fucking just take your phone and then post pictures of my dick with your phone to your horny followers. Deal with it. <laughs> uh, did Nutcracker Man give us genital herpes? Paranthropist Boise, whose skull cast is shown here, roamed across East Africa, East Africa 14 million years to one no 1.4 million years. To 2.4 million years ago, the ancestor of modern humans have gotten genital herpes from the now extinct relative of humanity, commonly known as Nutcracker Man. <laughs> you know, just uh, imagine being, you know, wiped off it, wiped from extinction, and just uh, like 1.4. Four million years later in the future, and you're called a nutcracker man. 
the ancestors get now analyzing the DNA of virus of the viruses, bacteria, and other life forms that can infest people's infest people reveal not only the origins of human diseases disease, but also but also valuable hints about the lifestyles of past humans and their ancestors. For example, a 2007 study revealed that humans caught pubic lice, a.k.a. crabs, from gorillas about 3 million years ago. Oh, um, uh, that, 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 that's something I didn't really... I, I was this many years old when I found out, you know, Haram, Harambe's uh, fucking people literally just gave us pubic lice. It's okay, we gave them banana. Everything good now. About 3 million years ago. Well, 2011, 2011 study suggests that Christopher Columbus and his crew brought syphilis with them from the New World to the Old World. Oh, well, an even bigger, you know, fucking fuck up, Christopher Columbus. We can use data from diseases to reconstruct da- to reconstruct events that are completely invisible to the archaeolog- archaeological and fossil records. Study senior author Charlotte Holdcroft, a biologist at a biologist at the University of Cambridge in England told Live Science Tracing H. Holdcroft and her colleagues analyzed two retreated viruses. Modern human herpes modern humans herpes simplex virus one results in cold sores, while herpes simplex virus two results in genital herpes. Okay. A study suggested that HSV-1 has infected a human family tree known as hominins, since at least a split from our precursors of chimpanzees about 6 million to 7 million years ago. Our biggest mistake in my opinion. We've been fucking... We, we've been fucking up the planet ever since. Return to monkey, damn it. That research estimated how long hominins possessed HSV-1 by comparing modern human variants of the virus with ones found in ships. DNA accumulate, accumulates mutations over time, over time at a relative constant rate, and by analyzing the levels of genetic differences between these viruses, scientists could estimate that estimate about when they were div- they diverged. A study suggested that in contrast to HSV-1, HSV-2 didn't begin infecting the ancestors of modern humans until somewhere between 3 million and 1.4 million years ago. As such, HSV-2 has have, must have come from another species, since hominids had already split off from chimpanzee predecessors. Herpes virus infects everything from humans to coral. Coral. Each species having its own specific, specific vir- uh, set of viruses, Holcroft said in a statement. For these viruses to jump species barriers, they would they would need a lucky genetic a lucky genetic mutation combined with significant, you know, fluid exchange. Oh God, coral, coral gets herpes. Coral that kills people. With each species having its own, uh, how modern humans got genital herpes. Researchers researchers thought that most likely route through which HSV two invaded the ancestors of modern humans was from African apes, through an unknown hominid species. They did not suggest that it was a that any hanky panky helped HSV2 jump the species bear. Rather, the intermediate hominid species may have contracted HSV2 through scavenging ancestral chimp meat. Ancent- ancestral chimp meat. That sounds like that sounds so much like a shit post. 
ancestral chimp meat. You know, a where the savanna where the savanna met the forest, with the germs seeping into the bodies via bites or open sores. The ancestors of modern humans, Homo erectus, could then have contracted HSV2 either by scavenging off the intermediate homonym or, say, drinking the next next to it at a lake. Holcroft and her colleagues said, said while discussing while, while discussing genital herpes over dinner, <laughs> genital mm, yes, this this steak is truly delicious. Now let me talk about monkey herpes. <sighs> welcome to the welcome to the Carganor show. If you're wondering uh, what the fuck is going on, I, I'm I, I, I we, reality has kind of a. Uh, gone downhill ever since we killed that fucking gorilla. He, 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 if you've ever read, like, Elder Scrolls lore, you know that he was, you know, the, the heart to the tower, and that by killing him, we deactivated one of Earth's towers and slowly caused reality to become loose. Everything's going wrong. Everything is going wrong. <sighs> Over there, the researchers suggested a finding... Uh, which hominid species transmitted HSV2 to the ancestors of modern humans. Their strategy suggested involving, involved analyzing the location where, ans where the ancestors of chimps might have overlapped with several, di with four different hominid species that lived in the past three, in, in the past three million years. Australopithecus afarensis, Homo habilis, Homo Rudolphinus and Parathropus Boisis. Boisei. First, the scientists reconstructed the ancient African climates to deduce where tropical rainforests were located over the past three million years since ancient chimps likely lived there. Next, they looked at where hominid fossils have been in, unearthed in Africa. Climate fluctuations over millennia caused forests and lakes to expand and contract. Study, le study lead author Simon Underdown, a path, a paleoanthropologist at Oxford, Brook, author Brooks in University of England, said in a statement: "Layering climate data with fossil locations help us determine the species most likely to come into contact with ancest ancestral chimpanzees in the forest." as well as other hominids at water sources. The most likely culprit for spreading genital herpes to the ancestors of human was the hominid Paranthropus boisei, which roamed East Africa, East, roamed East, across East Africa 1.4 million to 2.4 million years ago. The species earned the name Nutcracker Man because of its massive jaw and huge molars. Once HSV2 gains entry to a species, it stays easily transferred from mother to baby, as well as through blood, salva, and sex. Salvia and saliva and sex. Holdcroft said in a statement, the genital herpes virus would have crept across Africa the way it creeps down nerve endings in our sex organs. Slowly but surely. <laughs> Holcroft noted that hominid fossils discovered in the future could lead to other candidates for source candidate sources of genital herpes still. B boys I P boys I P boys I P boys I is likely to remain a strong candidate, she said. It is it is in the right part of Africa during the period of time when HSV2 is most likely to have jumped the species barrier, and it had the opportunity to overlap, overlap with human ancestors. Homo erectus, not all new fossil finds will fulfill these criteria as fully as, fully as P. Boisei does. Underground under Holcroft and their colleague Krishna Kumar, Krishna Kumar, an engineer at University of 
of Cambridge detailed their finding October the 1st in the journal Virus Evolution. Okay. What the... F okay, th th this is, uh... The, the, this, this, I'm saving this for another time. There's blue UFO soars over Hawaii crashing into the sea. Yeah, it sounds like the beginning of a bionicle. <laughs> 